Hey YouTube, today we're going to be making biscuits and gravy. Oh, and this stuff is so good. So at one point in the Appalachian South, biscuits and gravy were made a slightly different way than the way we make them now. There's all kinds of reasons for that. We'll talk about it as, as we go along. But I have to say, the old way of making it um, doesn't deliver any more flavor than what we have right here. And I'm going to show you how we get that kind of mouth-watering, old-fashioned richness when we make our gravy that you could get 100 years ago. So, easiest thing to do is start with a pound of sausage. You can make your own sausage, uh, which I've done often in the past and it's wonderful. Or you can use uh, bulk sausage from the grocery. I have my own particular kind that I like, my favorite brand, and that's what I use. And you start just by browning it. And as you're browning your sausage, you know, smack it down so you get nice crumbly bits. Because this is going to be the, the body and the, and the strong point of the dish going forward, all these little sausage crumbles. Now this is something that I wanted to show you. A <clears throat> hundred years ago, if you had sausage, it was from a very different type of pig than we have today. So I have not drained any of the fat from this. It just doesn't have much fat in it anymore. Not enough to make a true gravy like we want to. So what they used to do is cook the sausage in the pan and they would do sausage patties and then they would take the patties out and there would be enough fat left in the skillet to go on and make a gravy with. We don't have that anymore so we've got to do it this way. So once you've got your gravy or your sausage rather browned off, oh my butter's pretty soft. I got butter on my finger. Once you've got your uh, sausage browned off, you're going to add, there's a pound of sausage, you're going to add a half a stick of butter uh, cut in half. So that's, what is that? Four tablespoons, okay? And at this point, what you're doing is very similar to a classic bechamel. If you're familiar with the French mother sauces, or if you uh, got a friend from Europe who was teasing about how he'd never, ever, ever eat gravy, right? And I said, well, you eat bechamel all the time. He was like, yeah, that's different. Well, no, it's not different. This is exactly what we're doing. So drop that butter in there, and you just want to let that get softened up and melted down. And it's to replace the fat that has been bred out of the pigs that we are now consuming. Okay. Now here's the next step. <laughs> of course I have to drop it. All right. So quarter cup of flour, about a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt, about half a teaspoon of black pepper, and that's just a good solid three-finger pinch of red pepper flake, okay? Now, this sprinkled, oh, my salt stuck to the butter, <laughs> sprinkled right over the top of the sausage, and you really don't have to do a whole lot at this point. The reason you stir it in is so that all those little grains of flour are coated with the butter and the little bit of sausage grease that we had. And that, if you stir it in well here, will keep your gravy from having lumps. And it's only because the butter and the fat surround the grains of flour and keeps them from clumping together, okay? Now, I like gravy that's a little thicker. So, this, you can either use a little less if you want it even thicker than what I'm going to make, or you can use a little more if you want a thinner gravy. I think this is about right. Two and a half cups of milk. And I have whole milk. I cut the kiddos off of skim milk because of some of the emulsifiers and the sugars that kept appearing in the brands that I was able to get, so we've got whole milk. And you simply add it a little bit at a time and stir it in. I'm doing all of this in a cast iron skillet, which is the correct way to do it. If you don't have a cast iron skillet, don't worry about it. it. Doesn't make a bit of difference in this recipe. And I'm also doing it over slightly less than medium heat. Oh, look, see? Hang on, I'm gonna come over there to you. Oh, can you see it? See how it's already thickening up? All right. Doesn't take too long. So now, pour the rest of it in there. And at this point, it's like any other sauce or any other gravy that you make with a uh, fat and a thickener and a liquid. You need to bring it up to a boil and let it boil because that way the, the thickener, in this case flour, will have achieved its full thickening power, right? So it's probably going to take me just a minute to bring that up to a boil. Actually, don't boil it. Bring it up to a simmer and turn it back. So why don't 
I let that do its thing. I'll be back in a minute to show you what it looks like. I got Boone doing countdowns for me back here. <laughs> okay, so it's come up to a simmer. And when it starts doing this, you see, can, I, can you get that? You see it? When it starts doing this, you want to turn the heat down. You want it to simmer for a couple of minutes. Okay, you're going to get off all the raw flour taste that way. Most of it probably was taken care of it before we added the milk, just by mixing it in. Flour cooks very, very quickly. But just in case, you don't want that raw flour taste, right? And then, this is the other thing. It's just to a boil and I'm going to let it go, or to a simmer, I'm going to let it go another minute or two. You see how nice and thick that already is? It'll thicken up a little bit more, and we're going to let it thicken up a little bit more. And cream gravies, or you know, cream sauces, will tighten up a little bit between the point where you take it off the heat and by the time you serve it. So you kind of, you know, don't want to get it too thin until you know what your gravy is going to do. All right, got biscuits to pull out of the oven, and I'll show you what this looks like before I put it in my mouth. All right, so if you're going to have gravy, you almost have to have biscuits. Although, this stuff is so good, I've been known to just use bread. And Ricky will put sausage gravy between two pieces of bread and eat it like a sandwich, which, you know, I don't blame it. All right, you can use homemade biscuits if you want to. Biscuits kind of fall into that category of thing where it doesn't cost any less to make it from scratch. And you get something that is of such high quality when you use those smack biscuits, you know what I'm talking about, when you flap them and open them up that way. But I kind of, you know, I'm 50-50 on the biscuits. I gotta say, homemade biscuits are wonderful. I frankly don't want to do the dishes, okay? So, yes, these are smack biscuits. Don't judge me. <laughs> All right, so I just got my taste tester in here. I like to split the biscuits open and do them that way. And I like about that much. Wait a minute, you gotta come over here. You gotta come over here. All right, oh, that's biscuit. That's not gonna, that's not gonna hurt you probably poison. <laughs> so let's see how we did. Ricky's been eating the biscuits and gravy his entire life. And as you can see, it didn't hurt him any. <laughs> Pretty good? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so if you found this helpful, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. You can find me on, where am I? Facebook, I'm on Twitter, Pinterest. Oh, and Patreon, if you get a minute, hop on over to Patreon and check that out. I've got two cookbooks available right now in the Amazon store, and I think that's about it, isn't it? Who knows? <laughs> Alright, that's it. I'm going to eat some biscuits.